Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Keep Running with BK. And I just finished running my monthly MAF test, running for an hour at my target MAF heart rate to measure my fitness. And it's uh, been a, a rainy, windy morning. But uh, anyways, in today's video we're going to be looking back over my running from April 2021 and seeing what sort of running insights, training tips, or motivation that uh, I might find there to share with all of you. And uh, if you stick around to the end, we'll uh, look at my math test and how that went and talk about what's next. Thanks for uh, checking out this video. We'll be right back right after this. All right, welcome back for another end of month review. This is for end of month, April, 2021. And uh, you know, I think it's a really good idea to get into the practice of evaluating your training on a regular basis so that you get an assessment of how things are progressing towards your goals. And it gives you an opportunity to decide whether you need to make any adjustments uh, to stay on track for what you wanna get out of your running. And so my question of the day, just to start off is, do you evaluate your training, and if so, how often? And if you feel up to it, I'd really love to see in the comments below. Um, what's one change that you've had to make to your training recently based on things that have come up or even just a change in plans? As many of you know, I was training for the Cleveland Marathon, which got postponed. And after that, and dealing with some IT band syndrome issues, I made some changes late uh, last month coming into this month um, based on that. And if there's a theme to this month's review, it is testing my fitness. So before I shift gears going into the hotter months, I didn't want to see my marathon training and the three month 80-20 training block go to waste. And so I really wanted to put my fitness to the test. And I shared two videos earlier this month. One was a 10K time trial. The other was a half marathon time trial. And in a sense, those are evaluations of my training. They're putting my training to the test just to kind of evaluate the progress that I've made. Now, in this particular case, I think I shared in both those videos, it has been a long time since I have done a uh, race distance on the roads, most of the racing I've done over the past uh, decade has been on the trails and only on an occasional basis. Uh, although these weren't road races where I have other competitors that I'm competing against that I can use to kind of spur me on, I was able to conduct both of those solo time trials really to establish a benchmark of where my fitness is. How hard can I push myself based on the training cycle and get an idea of where I'm at. But as I shared too, I'm getting ready to have a birthday. And with that birthday, I'll hit a major milestone where I will turn 50 and enter into a new age group. And these time trial results will also serve for me as a goal or a target to improve upon and see uh, how much I can actually approve upon them. So before we get to that, let's uh, start with how did I do in the month in general? So I had 18 runs this month and I racked up a total of 125 miles. That is down slightly from previous months so far this year and that is primarily due to early on in the month for some unexplainable reason I threw up my lower back. It happens to me about once or twice a year for reasons I do not understand. It could be because I'm getting older, um, but that sidelined me for a week. So I lost a week's worth of training and I felt like I was playing catch up the rest of the month in a sense to get the mileage in. But uh, my goal for the year is to average 100 miles a month or more. And I'm happy to report that I did that with 125. And this past week in particular, I ran five days in a row, which I haven't done in a, you know, only in rare instances. 
Um, but that was because the month was coming to an end and I kind of had a, a, a plan B goal uh, or a secondary goal that I wanted to achieve, which was to run 200 kilometers or more as part of the Strava uh, distance challenge. Uh, I've got a streak going. I've got a string of months um, where I've been able to achieve that. And I saw that I was going to come up short if I stuck to my regular training regiment. And so I kept all my runs easy, all with the goal of trying to hit my math target uh, uh, heart rate. And I was able to get that mileage in and just eke in at the, the last day. So yay, congratulations to me. Um, but 125 miles, that brings me to, I think, uh, 560 miles for the year. And I averaged, my average run out of those 18 this month was about 6.94 miles. So, uh, again, I lost a week. Um, given I wasn't training for a marathon anymore, I backed off the mileage a bit on my long runs. And uh, I actually went to the Nature Center and did some trail runs for a couple of my long runs, just because that's something I miss and I really wanted to get back to. Um, I also averaged 33 miles a week for the weeks that I did run, uh, which is encouraging. And that really positions me going into May with my shift in training focus that I'll talk about at the end of the video to really be able to build on that mileage um, for a future goal. Um, let's talk about the time trials a bit. So I wanted to test my fitness. I ran a 10K and you can check out that video. I'll put the link up above and in the show notes. But in that 10K time trial, I ran a time of 46.12, um, which again is not great. Um, based on my historical um, times, but I was very encouraged that uh, I felt um, going into it, I had a target time based on uh, my V dot score using the Jack Daniels formula tables. Uh, I've talked about his book and uh, some of the research that he's done that I use uh, for my speed work planning and training. And I can also use that to forecast potential race performances. And I actually came, I think, three seconds off of that time. So I have to be very, very encouraged by that after only three months of speed work. Next up was a half marathon time trial that I did a week and a half later. Now, running a 10K, you know, is less than an hour of um, hard effort. And I've certainly put in... Um, enough speed work to cover that. But when you jump up to the half marathon, when you're talking 13.1 miles and running at, for about an hour, 40, 45 minutes um, at a hard effort like that, that is something that hasn't been tested by me um, in eight years. And so I was really, really interested in seeing how that would turn out since I wasn't going to be doing an entire marathon distance. And my time there was one hour, 43 minutes, 43 seconds, which was slightly off the pace of what I had hoped for. But I also went into it realistically understanding that uh, that was really pushing the limits on the amount of speed work that I was doing. And based on the fact I wasn't really training for that, um, I was really training for a marathon. Um, and it's a great baseline going into this new age group. Yeah. One of the things just from a mileage progression perspective that the, I did want to share in this review and I'll put on the screen here a graph that will show, you know, the accumulative miles um, compared to, to previous years. And I've already surpassed, I think, all but two of the last eight years in my mileage. Um, where I'm at now, only four months into it, I've already surpassed the entire year's volume of training for six of the last eight years. I'm coming up on, I think, 2018's total. I should surpass that possibly even this coming month. And I'm well on my way of chasing towards and surpassing my mileage um, that I completed for all of 2020, which was the first 1,000 mile year that I've had in 12 years. So feeling really good about that. 
And what I'd like to do briefly now is really speak to, you know, what's next? I've got a new goal as we enter into summer and it's going to be hot and humid here in the Midwest. Uh, I'm going to return primarily back to 100% MAF, our MAFETONE training, uh, low heart rate effort uh, training, uh, with the goal of gradually increasing my mileage a little bit more, maybe adding an additional day of running in the week. I'll add an easy effort just to build that uh, aerobic capacity. And I think what I'd like to do is start looking uh, late summer, early fall for another ultra marathon. I'd like to run another 50K. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, in the upcoming um, weeks, I'll be sharing some more videos, um, revisiting the Maffetone training method and talking about how that's going and some additional insights that I'd like to share around that. And uh, I hope that you will check back in and look forward to those videos as well. So in the introduction, you saw a uh, soaking wet uh, BK getting back in the car after performing his monthly math test. And I'd like to turn the focus there just to wrap things up with this video. So how did my math test go? Again, I run a monthly math test where I run for an hour at the track um, each month so that I have a consistent course, a flat course. I'm trying to control as many of the uh, environmental and terrain elements as I possibly can. And by running at my targeted MAF heart rate, I'm trying to evaluate, I'm able to, am I able to run further and faster at the same heart rate based on improvements gained from my training? And ideally, as runners, we like to see improvement month over, over month. And that did not happen this month. I was significantly slower. In fact, I struggled to even get my heart rate under the targeted heart rate, um, no matter how hard I tried. In part, it was dark. Uh, it was at 5.30 in the morning. It was raining. It was very windy. It was very limited light. And to be honest with you, all week I was struggling with getting my heart rate down. Um, not because I was trying to push it too hard or anything like that. But the reality was what my training was telling me is I'm still recovering from the half marathon time trial. When we have, um, you know, race type events like that, sometimes it takes time to, to fully recover from those before we can really resume training. And my body had been telling me all week uh, it was tired, it was feeling sluggish, my legs were feeling heavy. Uh, it really didn't matter how slow I tried to run. As the splits in my math test that I'll put up on the screen showed, um, my even my mile splits were way off and my heart rate was still elevated. So I share that insight with you because that's part of what I want to do on this channel. Is I want to share insights from my own running experience, my own training, share tips with you and even help to motivate you. And I think the insight that I'm sharing here is that, you know, it's a good idea to have a way to test your fitness. Coming back to the theme for this month's review, you should have a way to evaluate your progress and how your training is going. But just because you don't show improvement or the results don't turn out the way that you want to, doesn't mean that your training is necessarily going bad. Sometimes like for me this month, after a race, especially of a longer distance, um, we're not talking about a 5K necessarily or a 10K, but for half marathon, marathon, ultra marathon, it often takes a week to a few weeks to, to really fully recover before your internal body functions are going to be uh, reliable for, for that biofeedback from a measuring progress perspective. Um, all the biofeedback that I got from this month's math test tells me that I'm still recover in recovery. Uh, I'm still tired and not really ready to resume the normal programming or training cycle um, that I've got planned. And I'm okay with that. Uh, you know, and understanding that difference and learning how to evaluate your training really helps you to be a smarter runner so that you can train smarter and get the desired results that you want. So I, I hope you found some value uh, from this month's month in review video. Uh, if you got something out of it or if you appreciated it, uh, give me a like. And uh, if you're new to the channel, 
Um, subscribe, uh, share with uh, your other running friends if you think this is something that they would appreciate and learn from. And really to all of you, thanks again for checking out my video. I'd love to, to hear from you. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Strava. Um, I'll put links to those in the show notes below. You can also email me at bkskeeprunning at gmail.com if you have any questions or feedback or even ideas for future videos. Um, until next time, stay safe and keep running.